Happy Sunday, Tampa Bay. We're with you for another week here on the Duncan Duo Show to talk to you about the Tampa Bay real estate market like we are every Sunday here on 970 WFLA. When we are on air, make sure to check out all of our social channels. We are at The Duncan Duo, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TheDuncanDuo.com. Joined by Jamie Moody, uh, who is running for circuit judge. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit about his candidacy today as well as uh, some different things uh, in real estate, in law, and, and in homeowners insurance. And we're joined by our regular guest expert uh, on homeowners insurance, Richard Vasquez with Artisan Insurance. And, and Richard, um, obviously, uh, we're in the rainy season. But that's also a sign that, that hurricane season is, is upon us. And, and it's always a time to give people advice for preparation for storms, but also to, um, you know, to, to make sure that they have the proper insurance and everything set up on, on the right side of things for uh, any potential storms. Sure, that's right. Uh, don't forget that the busiest hurricane month out of the year in Florida is September. So don't be fooled because we're in a little bit of a lull. Traditionally, yeah. we get a couple of storms at the very beginning of the season, then we go through this lull. And then all of a sudden in September, everything fires up. Uh, Hurricane Irma last year was 9-11. So uh, don't be fooled by that and be prepared. And uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is that we've been doing a lot of studying and there's a lot of information coming out about what we learned from Hurricane Irma last year. And it's kind of opened our eyes to a lot of things and we're making sure that all of our customers are prepared and, and understand these things. Uh, things such as there was a lot of people last year who thought they had coverage when they got home after evacuating from Hurricane Irma. And didn't. And didn't because th their house was filled with water, uh, but there was no damage to their house. That's a thing. It's that's, a flood, that's a flood policy. Well, not necessarily. That's a thing that's called uh, wind-driven rain with ensuing damage. Wow. I know that's a mouthful, okay, and you're probably trying to wrap your head around that right now going, what is that? Well, during Hurricane Irma, you had a lot of wind that was blowing the rain sideways. The wind was so strong that the, wind, that the rain was falling horizontally. And you have rain hitting these houses and an making its way in through the eaves up underneath the roof line. And there's no damage, so the insurance company, some of the insurance companies, not all of them, some of the insurance companies are going out there going, there's no damage to this house. Nothing caused this water to get into your house, therefore we're not covering your claim. In the meantime, you've got seven inches of water sitting in your kitchen. So that's a thing that you need to look at your policy and determine does your policy cover ensuing water damage? Yeah, and that's it's something that insurance changes all the time. You know, there's obviously uh, legislation that changes it. There's there's uh, you know court cases that change it, and you know in years past you used to have you know you could you could you know kind of get different endorsements, and 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 now. Some endorsements are included in your policy automatically. Some of them you have to have as optional. There's even a push right now that some of the main homeowners insurance carriers are going to start adding on flood insurance as, a, as a, an endorsement onto the policy Absolutely. instead of a separate policy. So it's, it changes all the time. It's why you have to stay on top of it and, and you know make sure to talk to an insurance agent every year, making sure that you're properly covered. Could you imagine some of the people in Hurricane Katrina that maybe thought that they had coverage and, and didn't mm -hmm. when, when an insurance carrier made a policy change or... or you know, the law changed something with insurance, and then all of a sudden the storm hits, and they didn't make that update phone call to their insurance agent that year, and, and now they've got, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage to their house. Sure, absolutely. The expectation is if you have homeowner's insurance, my house is broke, you're going to fix it. But you need to understand that there is no policy out there that covers 100% of the things 100% of the time. Yeah. So you need to make sure that you have the right policy to cover what? is going to happen most of the times here in Florida. And that's one of the things that we're learning about. There's another thing that we're learning about. If you have a big, beautiful pool cage in your backyard, you may even have coverage for that pool cage. But it was discovered that there were a lot of insurance companies out there that cover just the mesh screens with their coverage. There was a lot of insurance companies out there that don't cover the mesh screens they only cover the framework. And then there, if you had the right policy or, or the best policy, you had 
an insurance company that covers both the mesh screen and the framework. So another potential gap in your coverage is if, you have, if you have a pool cage, you need to check with your insurance agent and find out how is how am I covered? How is that pool cage covered? Because you might not have the coverage that you think you have. And so this is obviously a time of year, um, you know, when when hurricane and flood becomes important. We're in we're in a rainy season. There is um, also out there, kind of on the horizon, FEMA, the extension um, for the National Flood Insurance Program that hasn't, I don't believe, at last check, it had been extended again, which means that we could have a little bit of lull or some challenges with real estate closings because flood insurance lapses with FEMA, and then you, know, you have to either go through a private carrier or um, you know pay for an ex, you know pay, pay for some sort of an extension in some instances if the property can't close because it requires flood insurance. Right, exactly. Now the good news is that there's a lot more private carriers. There's there's more and more always coming into the marketplace. So hopefully there should be somebody there to fill the gap. Now the question is, will it be at the same price that you were quoted before? Maybe, maybe not. Correct. Uh, could, yeah. You might have to pay a little bit more and if then you want you to close change, on that and then house. You change right policy. Away. You know, you change policy at a lower price if you choose to, or you could. A lot of people are always concerned about you know government backed policies and they prefer private carrier. You know, so obviously that's a personal choice. But um, you know, but again, uh, at least compared to years past, there there are more options now. Uh, for, for some sort of, you know, opportunity still to close and not have the closing go awry because, you know, FEMA hasn't extended. But, it, but I, you know, it seems like every year they, kind of, they extend it and they band-aid it together and then mm -hmm. hopefully someday it'll, it'll, all, get, it'll all get revamped and, and improved. So. I wanted to chime in on that as well, yeah. if you don't mind. So I, I've done a lot of work with insurance claims, and, um, and oftentimes the devil is in the details of how the policy is written. And Richard and I were talking about this before your show started. Um, often the, if you have the, you can have the same coverage from ten different companies, but the coverage operates differently depending on how that policy is written. Sure. And oftentimes the insurance uh, adjusters, when you make the claim, they haven't even read their own policy, and so you don't always take their word for it yeah. when you make the claim and it's denied, uh, because they don't often know what's in their own policy. And I would say, you know, and Richard sounds like he's on top of it, so you want to make sure you have uh, an insurance broker that, that no, understands the, the various policies, knows the the, the language. Uh, and then on top of that, companies handle their, their customers and their claims differently. Some uh, take the, the, adopt the position that we're going to fight you no matter what and look for reasons not to honor it, and some don't. So definitely rely on your, your insurance broker to, to, to coach you advice. in that regard. And if, and if, you've, and if you're somebody selling the insurance that, that doesn't know the difference, uh, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's well, right. you know, it's interesting. Obviously, there's always ratings out for all the carriers and everything, but, but and Richard, you've talked about this before. Um, you know, there, there are some companies that you can have the same exact policy at two different companies, but it's the execution of the policy. Just like, you know, just like a law, for example, you know, in one part of town, the speed limit is 55 and another part of town is 55, but maybe that side of town is the sheriff's office and this side city. And maybe they let you go five miles an hour over here and they don't really pull you over for it. And then over here they do. So it's, it's all about the enforcement of it. You can have the same policy. It's just a matter of whether or not that company takes a stance towards, like you said, wanting to uh, honor a claim or wanting to fight a claim. That's right. I, and I've gone to battle many times with insurance adjusters who uh, I've had to explain to them how their policy reads, and it, it amazes me. You know, uh, you you have to cover this because of X, Y, and Z. Here is your underwriting manual that says so. Mm -hmm. So, not to mention that you know, as a, as a broker, you, and, and Richard was just showing me before you got here, Andrew, a study that he was keeping current on regarding these insurance claims, hurricane claims, and uh, you know, if, if your broker is not keeping current because Correct. these policies are rewritten and changed every so time often. there's a new case law that comes yep. out and uh, you know, they write them to, to adapt. 